we have x plus 2 into x plus 3. So let us multiply it and see what we get. So we can write it as x into x plus 3 plus 2 into x plus 3. Now again, let's distribute x over x plus 3. So x into x gives us x square. x into 3 gives us 3x. 2 into x gives us 2x. And 2 into 3 gives us 6. Now these two are like terms. So we can combine these to get 5x. So we have x square plus 5x plus 6. So x plus 2 into x plus 3 gives us x square plus 5x plus 6. Now observe an important thing over here. 5 is equal to 2 plus 3 and 6 is equal to 2 into 3. So 5 is the sum of these two terms. And 6 is the product of these two terms. So is there something special about this expression that we are getting these values or does it hold in general also? Let us check it. So we take A and B in place of 2 and 3. A and B could be any numbers. And now let us expand it. So we can write it as X into X plus B plus a into x plus b. We have distributed x plus a over x plus b. Now we can write it as x into x, x square, x into b as xb, a into x as ax, and a into b as ab. So this is what we have. Now we can write it as x square. This is x into b. This is a into x. So x is multiplied with b here and x is multiplied with a here. So we can take x common and write this as a plus b. When we expand it, we'll get ax which is this and bx which is this. And we have an AB term. So this is what we have. And this is a special identity. Why is it special? It is special because it says that when we have to multiply two expressions which can be expressed in the form X plus A and X plus B then the coefficient of the middle term is the sum of A and B and the last term is the product of A and B. So this identity is very useful in mathematics. Let us check whether it holds geometrically as well. We have a rectangle here. This side of the rectangle is X plus A. This side of this rectangle is X plus B. So X plus A, X plus B. Now what will be the area of this rectangle? Length into breadth. So the area of this rectangle will be x plus a into x plus b. Now let us divide this into four small parts. So we divide it into four small parts like this. So now we have these four parts. Let us calculate the area of each part. This part has this side as x and this side as x. So the area of this part is x square. This part has one side as x and the other side as b. So the area of this part is bx. This rectangle has one side as a and the other side as x. So the area of this rectangle is AX. This rectangle has one side A 
and the other side B. So the area of this rectangle is AB. So this is what we have. Now this bigger rectangle is broken down into four parts. So the area of this big rectangle which is x plus A into x plus B should be equal to the sum of the areas of these four. So x plus A into x plus B should be equal to x square plus AX plus BX plus AB because these are the areas of these four rectangles. So x plus a into x plus b is x square plus ax plus bx plus ab. So this is what we have. Now again we can write it as x square plus x is multiplied with a here, x is multiplied with b here. So we can take x common and write it as a plus b and this term is ab. So we get the same identity. So we have proved it geometrically as well. x plus a into x plus b can be written as x square plus a plus b into x plus ab. Now answer this question. Can you solve this using this identity? In order to solve this, using this identity, we need to compare these two. So if we take 2y to be x, then we have x plus something into, again we had taken 2y to be x. So we can write this as x plus something. Now if we take 5 to be a, so this becomes x plus a and if we take 7 to be b, this becomes x plus b. So we have converted this into x plus a into x plus b form. So yes, we can use this identity to solve this. Although we didn't have a variable here, we have a product of a variable and a constant which is 2y. But since it is present in both the expressions, we can apply x plus a into x plus b. So yes, the following identity can be used to find this. And let us see how can we use it. So we take 2y to be x, 5 to be a. 2y has already been taken as x and 7 as b. So this becomes x square which is 2y whole square plus a plus b into x. So a is 5, b is 7 into x is 2y plus ab. a is 5 and b is 7. So this is what we have. Now let us simplify it. 2y whole square because entire 2y is x. So 2y whole square is 4y square. 5 plus 7 is 12. 12 into 2y is 24y. So this is 24y and 5 into 7 is 35. So this is how we can multiply these two by using this identity. Now can we use this identity here? Let us see. If we take P to be X, Q to be A, then again we have a P here which is X and we can take 3Q to be B. So this is of the form X plus A into X plus B. So we can write it as X square which is P square plus A plus B into X. A is Q, B is 3Q into X is P plus AB. A is Q and B is 3Q. So this is what we have. Now let us simplify it. P whole square is P square 
q plus 3q is 4q into p and this is q into 3q is 3q square so this is what we have now 4 q into p is 4 p q so we get this p square plus 4 p q plus 3 q square so this is the answer when we multiply these two expressions we get this now note that if we had a 2 p here then we would not have been able to use this identity because then the first two terms of these two expressions would have been different. Now we need to find this product. So can we apply this identity here? Note that we have a minus sign here whereas we have a plus sign here. But we can write x minus 3 as x plus minus 3. Now do we have it in the form of x plus b? Yes. Now we have it in the form of x plus a into x plus b. So this is x plus a into x plus b. Here 2 is a and negative 3 is b. And we can apply this identity. So this becomes x square plus a plus b that is 2 plus negative 3 into x plus a b which is 2 into negative 3 so this is what we have x square plus 2 plus negative 3 into x plus 2 into negative 3 and let us simplify this we get x square, 2 plus negative 3 is 2 minus 3, 2 minus 3 is minus 1, so this is minus x, 2 into negative 3 is negative 6, so this is minus 6. So we have used this identity to calculate this, where the value of b was negative. So let us substitute negative b in place of b in the identity and see what we get. So we get x plus a into x plus negative b. We substitute negative b in place of b on the right hand side as well. So we get a plus negative b into x plus a into negative b. So this is what we get. At all places we have substituted a negative b in place of b. Now let us simplify it. We get x plus a into x plus negative b becomes x minus b. This is equal to x square a plus negative b is a minus b. So a minus b into x and a into negative b is negative ab. So we put minus ab over here. So when we have x plus a into x minus b, we have the product as x square plus a minus b into x minus ab. So this is what we have. But we could also have x minus a into x minus b. We could also have x minus a into x plus b. So do we need to remember so many identities? Well, we don't. We simply need to remember this identity and all these can be derived from this. How? Whenever you have a negative sign, consider that a negative term is being added. So this minus can be considered as a negative 
term to be added and then we can apply this identity. So solve for x minus a into x minus b. Now we have seen that whenever we have a minus sign, we can consider that a negative term is being added. So this can be written as x plus negative a times x plus negative b. And now we can apply our identity. It gives us x square. So we have x square plus a plus b into x. But a here is negative a. b here is negative b into x plus a into b. So negative a into negative b. So this is what we have. So let us simplify it. We get x square negative a plus negative b. This is minus a minus b. So we have minus a minus b into x. Negative a into negative b is ab. So we have a plus ab here. Now we can take a negative 1 common from here because negative a is negative 1 into a, negative b is negative 1 into b. So we can take a negative 1 common here. So let's do that. So this becomes x square and if we take a negative 1 common, we have a minus sign here. So we can write it as a plus b into x plus ab. So this is the answer for this.